to another episode of 72 Pin Connector. With us this week, we have Tom Webster. What's up? And Adam <laughs> Jordan. What is up? Hello. Not much. Um, Josh had some stuff come up, some people in town, so he's not going to make it this week. Fired. No. Also, the board <laughs> has decided. Yes. Again. Again. Somehow. Our board is ultra indecisive. Yes. Because it's yeah. Tom. Yep. Yep, I am the board. Pray I do not board further. Uh, how wow. y'all's week's been going? Fucking busy. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, I've, um, you've been having uh, some fun, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I've I've been I've been working hard, and this this week at work has been very very busy, very busy. Yeah. 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 Work. Yeah. yeah. Fuck that. Work. I actually thought like about. Yay. When I got here, what, two hours ago? I thought, oh, shit. I'm going to have to do some more work. But it turns out I didn't have to, which was great. Nice. That's good. That's yeah. great. I love not doing work. That's one of my favorite things, well, actually. Yeah. One of the too. best feelings in the world, and I've had this working for where Adam's working and working in the IT sector, of you think there's work. You get called to do work. You go there, and you're there to do the work, and then you're told, oh, there's nothing to do. It's all of a sudden, like, it starts with that feeling yep. of dread. Oh, like, God damn it, shit. I got to do this. And then <laughs> this, once this... you get there, nothing's there. Yep. You're like, oh, my God. This... It's awesome. what, how amazing. This is parallels with one of my favorite things in the entire world in that canceling plans. Yeah, I, yes. I, I figured like, you were going like, there. <laughs> or when plans are canceled without your input. And it's like, oh, my God, the whole day is free. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Well, we were going to have plans. dinner with your great uncle <laughs> Roger, but he died. So yeah. we're not going now, okay? Yeah, but I would say that's a little bit different. No, it's not. Yeah, that's, Fuck that's great that's uncle something. Roger. There, there, there's degree of plans. <laughs> if it's a dinner date with a couple you don't really like or you have to go see a family members that you don't really like, when that gets canceled, like Adam said, it's Eureka. <laughs> but like honestly, that. Even if it's something that you don't hate, sometimes when it gets canceled, it's like, oh, uh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, but okay. I would have had fun if it didn't get canceled. But now that it's canceled, ah. Uh. <laughs> okay, well, let's say what if Ribs Fest would have got canceled? For record, back in Columbus, there was a yearly Ribs Fest Blues or Jazz and Ribs Festival that would go on with something like 30 or 40 traveling barbecue joints that would come in to, for a competition while a lot of oh, live yes. jazz music's going on. So that was the best way to get lost in the sauce. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, get sauced. It, it is like the hardcore meat sweats because you're eating nothing but barbecue <laughs> for three days. In and like it's also 90 bloody degree weather. fucking hot. Yeah. By the time Sunday rolls around, you're just like, oh, I need something green. <laughs> I, would I need kill to eat for something green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's Can I get that it's... with light ranch? Thanks. Yeah. Actually, you know what? But, oh, it's so no good. No ranch. But no, like <laughs> stuff like that. If that gets canceled, it's like, God dang it. Did yeah. I just say that? Yeah. But yeah. God dang. Yeah. Gosh, Gosh darn it. Gosh darn. Golly. Oh, well, boy, golly gee. But like wow. if something I'm not, it's like you said, the whole day's freed. I get to sit on my lazy ass and fish or play video games. It's like, yes. Doesn't <laughs> fishing involve like some amount of work? Like you have to put on like big ass pants and... And you go out and you, you walk <laughs> in water and you're like, Psh, right? So every time you cast, you get a, Psh. yeah, just like that. Just Psh. like that. It's like you're taking a really awesome piss. You're just like, Psh. <laughs> just like I that. Always just, I always just jumped in and punched the fish. Just bam. I mean, that's the manly way of doing <sighs> it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need equipment. I, I get in there and kill once. something. <laughs> he like just dives off the bridge head first into the water and like comes out with the small mouth above his head. I win. <laughs> <laughs> I have bested my enemy. Now I will eat you Fish and are, gain your power. Fish are nothing. <clears throat> ah, well, enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? I was I was liking where this conversation was going. It was about yeah, to be like Neanderthal start fire. Yeah, moment. no, that's fine. Right. Like, I'm, I'm all into club and fish. Bam. <laughs> let's get into uh, let's change yes. that to video games. How about that? Yeah, um, I think I think some of us games. have played some. 
like yeah. Adam, I, I think you played a little bit, I did, actually. I did, yeah. There's Let's some notable start. stuff about a game that we normally ignore. Well, yeah. we, we don't ignore, but we don't talk. We'll, yeah. Yeah, 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 you know what I'm so saying. Let's, get let's, let's, go down, let's go down the list. So we'll yes. just start with Rocket League because that's kind of a given. I play that every week. But um, a uh, big update happened. Really, really good. good shit. Autumn update, lots of improvements. Um, lots of new items, new crate. Um, season six of Ranked started. All kinds of good stuff. Would you like to explain uh, the new cosmetic that was introduced? Because I like that. I think it's really cool. What, These, the banners? Yes. Yeah. I think we talked about banners uh, a couple weeks ago when they announced them. Ah, true. But, we did. Uh, they, they introduced player banners. Um, uh, from what I understand, Call of Duty does this too, something like that. They do. Uh, every time you score a goal, the banner pops up. Uh, the banner pops up on the main menu on the bottom. And then after the match, when you do your whoever wins, it'll show their banners up on the screen too. Uh, fun little customizable things. Was I mean, I, I get that they wanted it at, to add more collectibles to Rocket League, but is this something people were actually clamoring for? Some of them no, are pretty cool. Nobody asked for this, but it was actually some we of them are pretty cool. This. So Datum's got a really cool one. So um, there's a quick <laughs> chat for this as well as in Rocket League, it's a physics-based game. <laughs> a lot of people are really good and can make shit happen, but a lot of times, even with the best players, shit just kind of happens. <laughs> yeah. And of course, whenever you do some crazy ass shit you didn't expect, what do you tell your opponents? Eh, it's calculated. Cal calculated. It's all math. You know, something crazy happens. The ball pinches off of two cars and off to the back wall and then flies across the field and perfect top corner of the net. Yeah, calculated. I meant to do that. Yeah, totally. So, Easy. Um, so this I, banner I got. Yes. I got this banner um, on the bottom. It'll show your name. And then it shows like all these lines drawn like math equations and then it shows a calculator <laughs> on the banner and the display on the calculator flashes easy nice <laughs> i love toxicity in the banner the, the best yeah, the best rocket league gif i've ever seen is someone playing rocket league they put the controller down grab like a ti-83 punch yeah. in an, an equation <laughs> shows a graph and then they maneuver their car the camera pans up to the game screen they maneuver their car and <laughs> score it's like yeah, holy yeah. shit they launch into a full <laughs> court aerial it's really cool yeah um though uh souls in the uh chat calls out one thing i do want to harp on so mm -hmm. psionics did a, they realized demos were a little broke there was an mm -hmm. angle of attack for a demo that would result in a non-demo when it really should have so, so, so oh hold on hold on by demo for those of you okay. who are not familiar with rocket league you refer to yes. demolitions yes um if you are going of a certain speed and hit a player not traveling at said speed they will blow up <laughs> or if you both hit each other at that speed you will both blow up <laughs> So there was an nice. angle you could hit someone at and they wouldn't blow. So supposedly yeah. to fix that, I haven't had an issue with it. However, now there is a new issue where if you're driving straight into someone on the side and you T-bone them, sometimes you die. <laughs> nice. Yes. Yeah. Every, every major update they put out seems to somehow inexplicably affect like the game physics or something like something always every update something always gets broken and then like the servers are always down the first couple hours of the update and then some major game feature gets broken and hot fixed within the next couple of weeks there's, one, there's always time there was something a, <laughs> there wasn't the one where it was like the uh, corner of the goal post would launch the ball really fucking weird huh or there was but, yeah there for, the there for a while there for a while the posts of the goal usually you know if you hit kind of towards the inside of the post it'll hit the post and then bounce in physics but in that case it would like hit the post at the angle that which it would go in and then come back out of the post the more or less the same angle that it was going to begin with like completely non-realistic hmm. not not at all how the physics are supposed to work it so that was messed up for a while off. yeah and then uh some of the corners of the map where it um the little half pipe going from the floor to the wall you know, when the ball hits that a certain way, you know, that was kind of messed up for a while, too. It's just yeah. weird stuff. There's always um, something. <laughs> they, they they deal with what Battlegrounds talked about. The reason they slowed down their weekly updates was we fix one thing, we break something else. Mm -hmm. So any modern programming yes. project. Though, by and large, I will yeah. give them credit. Um, it always tends to net positive. It does. This time, it seems to be one for one. So it's like a zero. 
but mm -hmm. this one is kind of egregious to the point I think they're going to hot fix it. Well, I, I saw what was yeah. this like six gigs of Rocket League updates? It was a three gig update, I think. Okay, three gig update, yeah. Which is massive. Every time I've seen Rocket yeah. League update, it's you know a hundred, two hundred megs. Well, because you're adding well, new cosmetics, right? They're adding a lot of new content in this one. Yeah, so um, to them break 60, the whole 60 lot plus with this. new items. It's like 60 plus new items. Dang. Uh four or five new maps. All yeah, kinds of it was stuff. and some of the new maps. Um they're gorgeous. They're doing mm. really good on their maps. Hmm. Um my only beef is one of them I feel has an orange over or like hue to the entire map. Yeah, it's very warm. So where orange mat or orange cars can be hard to track. Ooh. I mean, it's not like they blend in perfectly. It's not a real big deal. I think it can be. Like, so every once in a while, you get to the point where, like, okay, I'm going to shoot. Oh, fuck, there was someone back there I didn't notice. I think it ups the chances of that happening. Where you think you have an open goal, and you didn't realize there was a dude back there because he kind of blends in a little bit. What they should do yeah. is they should make mic microtransactions that gives your car oh, camo. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you can blend like in with the, the grass, optic cam like yeah. the optic camo yeah. of Metal Gear Solid. Yep, that'd, that'd be, be perfect. perfect. Yeah, or faster cars. Pay two ninety nine to unlock this faster car. No, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I want auto targeting. Ruin, ruin I want everything. I want ten dollar microtransaction shot auto targeting. <laughs> like all I have to do is jump and press boost, and somehow it like uh, gets its way to the goal. You get fucking. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're gonna get a fucking headshot mod in there, and it's just gonna be yeah. But like, oh, I'm, I'm going to aimbot Rocket League. And Tom is finally good at Rocket League, which is something I <laughs> yes. still can't claim after 1,500 hours. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those I'll games. Be great. Definitely one of those games. But Most definitely. That's, you know, Rocket League, new season started, did some placement matches. You know, it's always good. New stuff. Check it out. Uh, the second game I played was not something I would normally play. Um, it was a series of games I played uh, when I was younger, probably when I was still in high school. Um, the Call of Duty franchise. Um, yes. I've definitely not paid any attention to Call of Duty since, what, Modern Warfare 2 came out, something like that. Yeah. Maybe Black Ops. And once those Same. games started coming out, I started to like it less and less. It just wasn't for me. Um, but the Call of Duty World War II beta, open beta, um, was live on Steam. It's free this weekend. So if you want to play it, you can do so. And we did play it. We played it for a little bit last night. And yes. I played a little bit the day before, a little just for, you know, a few matches. It was actually pretty fun. I mean, I'm not a Call of Duty player. I'm not even a real big first person shooter player, um, but it was fun. I mean, there seems to be less, uh, less over the top bullshit that I've noticed in some of the more recent games. It seems like they toned some of that down a little bit. It actually reminded me a lot of World at War or, you know, um, the gameplay, anyway, seems yeah. a little bit more towards the, not the old school Call of Duty games, but, you know, like everything from Modern Warfare to Black Ops. So those games yeah. in between there, it reminded me a lot of those. It felt like a little bit of a blend. It was still, I feel, faster paced like the most recent ones, but it doesn't have the jumping off walls and all that yeah, hyper aggressive. Yeah. And there's a lot of customizations to say, but you're mm -hmm. limited in how you can apply them. And then the kill streaks is just um it's the same as it's been since like warfare or world or war yeah mm -hmm. it it felt good for a call of duty game um mm -hmm. I, I think it felt a lot like it felt like a mix between modern warfare one and two to me um kind of the def yeah. as you were saying the speed of the the most recent iterations but finely tuned and focused more on gunplay and knowing the mm -hmm. map that rather gun than play, the that gunplay is good gunplay is real good I think I like for it. a Call of Duty game, yes, the gunplay is good. I don't, I don't like the gunplay of Call of Duty you games. See, you think gunplay in no, CS I, is good? Yes, I figured it out. I figured it out. I hate aiming down the scope. I hate looking down iron sights. I hate having you know hold right mouse button and fire. I don't like it. Fuck aiming. If That's, I have to aim, gunplay sucks. <laughs> right? Like I, I get it. I totally get it. That it's such yeah, a personal it's... shitty little thing to rip to rip on a game for, and I, I totally get it. It's it's probably a a good game. Mm -hmm. I don't care for well, it. You know, I can understand that. And I'm kind of the opposite. When I play a game, you know, like Counter-Strike or Overwatch or something, or TF2, the when that's not a main mechanic, when you're not aiming down the sights, I for some, that's a kind of a turnoff for me as far as first-person shooters are concerned. 
I'm just not really as into that as I am, you know, aiming down the sights. I, I will echo what V Dobby said in chat. The gunshots themselves felt mm-hmm. really good. Yeah. All the guns that I used, granted, was a very small sampling of what's going to be in the full game. They right. all felt really punchy. They felt nice. It didn't. Mm-hmm. It didn't. Uh, you know, hold your crosshair like, oh my god, look, I've got perfect accuracy with a machine gun. There yeah. was there was good <laughs> spray, but not too much. You you felt like you right. were. Uh, fighting the gun for control at some points which is which is good for a first person shooter that's gonna it's supposed to be that way yeah i I was surprised i forgot how fast that game played it Mm -hmm. um well like i said i still think that's faster than any iterations we played because i think we you guys left off warfare 2 era i kind of stuck around Mm -hmm. until the third and that was about it but we didn't play the most recent much and those is when it really picked the fuck up right but you guys were on to it to me call of duty was the first game to do this I call it thud. It feels really good, but I call it like thuddy, where when you hit, oh, yeah. you hear a thud. It'll oh, give yeah. you an yeah. indicator. You hear it. You feel it because of the other sensations yeah. you're receiving. And you can actually turn that off and on in the options. I noticed the I don't oh, that's know. Hit, nice. feedback. hit feedback is a toggle in the options. Man, I don't know why you would. I think that hit yeah, feedback it's so is so satisfying when you hit that. Yeah. After in so I think I got started with hit with hit feedback in TF2, where you could turn on the ding. Now, granted. The dings, the the hit feedback in TF2 is super, super annoying. And, and it's it is, cartoony. It is. It's it's a, a bell dinging every time you hit someone. And if you're playing Pyro, you just ding all day long. Yeah, that's basically the whole I fucking the game. Yeah. Um, but I really like this because it fits in with the aesthetic and it lets you know, mm-hmm. hey, yeah, I did actually tag that guy with the sniper rifle, but he didn't go down. He's probably pretty close. Yeah. yeah. The snipers um, in that game are fantastic, uh, I, by the way. I, yeah. And yeah. the M1. I love M1 them. Grand. Oh, yeah, I, I love the Grand. grand. The that shing when you reload. Oh, yep. it's so good. It really is. I'm really glad they went, I'm really glad they went back to the World War II thing. I know that that was kind of overplayed for a while. Um, but now that we've gotten more modern shooters than anything, it's nice to get another World War II shooter in. Well, yeah. I like modern. What mm-hmm. I didn't like is this. Well, I shouldn't say I didn't like it. I like it to a degree. I didn't like where COD took it necessarily, where the hyper-futuristic, instead of, I like modern, I like past, I like sci-fi, but don't try to give me believable future. Mm -hmm. That's where I really get a separation. Right. So Dark Soul Invader in chat's asking, are the maps good? Personally, I thought they were great. There's a lot of different pathing options. Uh, there's a lot of options to sneak up behind people. It's It's not congested there's always another way to get to flank your opponent essentially it's not congested but they are still pretty close quarters uh it's call of duty it it makes it interesting there's not a big open sprawling maps in that kind of game anyway it's not expected and i think they um, only really open up about what four maps three or four i think there was yeah four maps one of them was yeah they were good there's lots of love the trench map yeah trenches those were cool because it, it um, not only gives you the great path differentiation because you're in fucking trenches, but now mm-hmm. you can be on top or below, which gives yeah, you that was, some really cool verticality to the level. I was I was just about to bring that up. All the maps actually had pretty good verticality built yes. into them. It wasn't all level. It wasn't, you know, running through the same office building or anything. It was Which reminded you know, me a lot of the uh the early maps in Modern Warfare One, which had a, a bunch of different buildings you can get into and windows you can mm-hmm. shoot out of. Yeah. Yeah. All in all, I don't think any of us are COD players. I don't think any of us are going to pick it up. No. But if you are a fan of COD or even some of the older CODs, you will like this game. It is a good game. Yeah. I I think if you like the gameplay of Modern Warfare 1 or 2, you should look into this, especially right now for the free weekend. Like, Mm -hmm. while you're watching the show, go to Steam, install it. Like, literally, the the, uh, multiplayer beta, you go to Steam, you search Call of Duty World War 2, and you click install. And that's it. Yep. No bullshit, yeah. no second account, no, no other launcher. launcher. <laughs> Just install and play. And it's it's sad that we have to bring this up as a as a great feature of a <laughs> right. game as, because as they an make outlier. it yeah because they <laughs> make a it AAA so easy. Major title has no extra account and yeah, is easy you can opt and, into an extra yeah. account. And I yeah. guarantee yeah. you that when that game comes out, if you sign yeah, in with them, to. you're going to get yeah. something. Oh, yeah. you may not have to, but you're going to get a perk to where you feel you have to. Yep. Yeah. So I, this is something I I'm not sure uh, because we're all really bad at Call of Duty now. Um, yes. But you brought up perks, and I'm wondering if they've 
still been doing a good job or if this has been a problem where players who have played longer unlock the perks that are objectively better than somebody who just started playing now i feel that or is it that they are playing better i think cods 10 they've when i was playing they did pretty well of you don't put level threes with level 50s Mm -hmm. they've done a pretty good decent job of that they didn't really do mmr tracking so if you're a level yeah. three playing out of your mind, you're going to wreck the rest of level threes. Right. But I feel that they've done a pretty good job of gating away people who have unlocked too much to where they get an unfair mm-hmm. advantage in the past. Okay. In this beta, it didn't feel that way. We've got, we, we got put in some lobbies with like level 28, 30 people and it was yeah. a shit show. There's, there's one thing <laughs> that I saw Modern Warfare do, and this, this is actually called out in several game design blogs and sites and videos um where the noob tube as much as people hate it is actually a really integral part of that multiplayer because with the noob tube a noob can take out a guy way more skilled and with way more perks and levels and guns unlocked because it's mm-hmm. so easy now there are other strategies that are better than using the new tube it's not the end all be all weapon but it mm-hmm. does allow new players to the game to uh effectively compete with people that should by all means totally wipe the floor with them and this game has one does it? It's a fucking bazooka. You get it level one. Okay. All right. I did not play with yeah. the bazooka. I didn't know that. You get two shots per life with the bazooka. There we go. And it's fun. <laughs> I killed a guy point blank with one. It was fun. Nice. Uh, one thing that I did not see in previous Call of Duty games, which I actually really liked and was called out in chat earlier, I totally bayoneted a dude. Oh, in, yeah. In the chat. Yes. Was- that's so, so satisfying. You can you can run forward <laughs> as long as your gun has got a bayonet on the front of it. You can do your your Call of Duty sprint thing and then press the melee and you'll hold up your gun. You'll be like ah, running crazy ah! Tarzan man to yeah. stab a guy. And if you run into him, it's an instant kill. I I got yeah. so many cheap kills in the trenches by doing that and running <laughs> around blind corners. It was so much fun. Yes, and before you think that's yeah. overpowered, if you do that and run around a blind corner and the guy's ten feet away from you, you're dead. Oh yeah, that happened <laughs> more than enough. Like I killed three people with the bayonet that way, and I got killed mm-hmm. forty seven times so, without that. So that that is one thing about Call of Duty that's worth mentioning is how quick you die. Yes. It does oh, not take yeah. many shots to die. And um, some of the quicker shooting, like submachine guns and stuff, can be a little overpowered. I actually heard that they were already going to be nerfing the submachine guns for the release. They need to. Because yeah, they they're do. Just, when, when, when everybody is such a glass cannon in a way... Like, you got to really pay attention to stuff like that. that well, because people, people were sniping with the, I can't remember, the side the side load clip gun. I can never remember that one. But I was oh, getting I in areas where people were on long, open stretches, sitting on one mm-hmm. end of it, just waiting for people to run at them. Because yeah. they didn't have to be yeah. accurate. That thing throws enough bullets to it shoot could, down yeah. the lane. So so yeah. that, that said, um, I totally planked on what I was about to say. That sucks. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm losing it. Losing That's it. my special move. What do you Come on, we got Tom not to talk. Let's <laughs> bask in you're this. The rant, you're, the rant, you're the rant king. You're the one that's supposed to be right? on top of this. Right? <laughs> yeah, I, I totally forget what I was going to say. But it's. But it's I, really I did. It, went, it did feel kind of hard to play with the M1 Grand because you have to get basically two shots, you know, single firing. I remember. There are people who are just. Was that it? Uh, so, <laughs> so even though people are glass cannons and you do die a lot, one thing that does happen in that game is. It respawns are instant, at least in team deathmatch mm. that we were playing. It's not, oh, you died. You got to wait 10 seconds. It's if you're in team deathmatch and you die, mm-hmm. hey, skip the fucking kill cam and get back into the yeah. game. Yeah, I like yeah. that as well as the option for the kill cam. I'm not sure where I sit. Sometimes I love it. Uh, it allows you to, if you're getting killed by the same sniper 10 times in a row, it allows yeah. you to see where the fuck he's sitting. But yeah. if you're that sniper... God damn it, he knows where I'm at now. I, I want the default well, flipped. I, I want to be able to push a button to see the kill cam, and I want it to default to off. Because but, most of the time, I don't give a shit. You can, I, I spam F anyway. You spam yeah, F. That's, you, that's what I've been doing. You can cancel it mid-replay, which is nice. But Call of Duty yeah. is such a fast-paced game. If you're sitting in one spot sniping for that long that people can look at the kill cam and find where you are, you kind of deserve it. Um, I remember in some of the uh, ones I was playing, most of the maps, I won't say had it, but a good bit of them had nice open areas where a sniper mm-hmm. can hide. Yeah. And that was the thing. It's not necessarily that it had to be a great perch, 
It's that you had a long view and you had some teammates constantly running through to where you can lay there and they're going to focus on the other people and you're the one hitting them hard. Yeah. But yeah, either way, it was, it was pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's, it. not, yeah. it's not good enough um, to make me buy it, but buy I'm, it. Not a, yeah. I'm not a Call of Duty fan. so I'm not going to buy it, but I'm glad I downloaded the beta and I'm glad I played it because it was fun. It was fun for yeah. a couple of days. Good yeah. time. If you're interested, play it, definitely. One thing I will say, it made me realize I'm not as good at first-person shooters as I used to be. Yeah. <laughs> Get I too used old to be for that. really good. <laughs> you, you, really. you speak to, for yourself, man. I got like four kills and I died like 68 times. I, I am fucking easy. great. I had a match where I was going <laughs> even. I was like nine and nine and then my game crashed. Yeah, um, it was yeah, a really a unstable game. Yeah, it happened Mine to me fine. twice. I think Mine it's fine the whole time. Yeah, but it's a beta. It, it's going to yeah, happen. It's supposed to crash. If See, I paid if you, 60, a, if you had a five-year-old AMD PC, you'd be great. But <laughs> I, have, I have that new Intel bullshit and AMD yeah. um, graphic or NVIDIA graphics yeah, it's sucking AM, me up. AMD graphics? I'm gonna have to leave. Nothing wrong with AMD. AMD. That's what that, that little baby yeah. right there I'm is running at AMD. You're fired. Intel processor though is it is it fine? Intel processor, we're good. Yes, and in, Intel processors, fine. man. Those I core a lot. Though people like Ryzen's. Anyway, Adam, I think you yes. were playing a little bit more yeah. though, weren't you? Yes, yes. Uh, speaking of free weekends, last weekend was a free weekend for Overwatch. Yay. Overwatch is hugely popular, and I have not played it at all. Um, I was never interested in it. It's not. I'm not really into that type of game. I never got into TF2. Uh, but we played it last week, and after the cast for the postcast community game, and it was actually pretty fun. Uh, even as somebody who isn't really into this kind of stuff as much, I did have a good time playing it. I'm not going to buy it. You know, like Call of Duty, I'm not going to buy it, but I had a good time playing it. It was fun. Um, there's some stuff I feel they should adjust a little bit with it. We had 10 people at one point, and we mm -hmm. couldn't play a private match. We had to have eight, I think it was. Six. No, well, no I mean, we had to have 12, or we had to have six, yeah. No. And it was one of those things where just let us run with an even number. I mean, if it's private, let us do whatever the fuck we want. Just let yeah. us start the match and be handicapped. <laughs> but um, that great. really messed with what we were trying to do. So mm -hmm. it kind of killed the postcast a little bit. We ended up funneling down to about six of us. And yeah, it was a good game. Yeah, it's good. I liked, um, I liked the character variety. It's, it's more so, you know, TF2, you've got obviously character variety. But they all more or less shoot guns and... That's not even the case with Overwatch. Some of them don't really shoot guns. Some of them are more melee focused. Some of them are more support focused. So that was pretty cool. I feel that Overwatch feels more, un I hate saying this because it's not close to it, but more realistic, more tuned, more, more competitive. It's tuned to be more of a competitive game. I could Where see that. I think yeah. TF2 is, I always viewed it and to play it, I still think it's like a lighthearted game. I know some people it's, such as AOL, Instant Messenger, DLaz, whatever the fuck you want to call him, Buck Masterson. He's a TF2 fanatic and he's great at it, but I just feel that Overwatch nailed it. They got more of a competitive feel. It feels more tuned. Mm. It feels more it's, balanced. So Overwatch yeah. to me feels like um, somebody took TF2 and Dota, smushed them together, and then laid this almost impossible to muster unless you are this company a level of blizzard polish over the whole experience yeah yes very polished very smooth everything flowed well so i'm i'm totally uh, gonna everything had a good feel to it i mean it, it's a really really well-made game really I, i'm well totally gonna game. gonna jack your your, your thing here because i yeah, bought overwatch nice so after after the free weekend it was 20 bucks off i got it for 30 um and I have played a shit ton of Overwatch recently. That's awesome. Uh, I've got to be That's the good. master of jumping onto games after, you know, the people in our group stop playing them because uh, because I keep doing that. But it is so much fun. Um, I, I think it's it's the little shit that makes this better than TF2 because TF2 could get to this point if they really wanted to. Uh, but Overwatch has got stuff like the the play of the game and easy taking of clips and stuff like that and and this is mostly due to the fact that let's be real tf2 came out with the orange box which was released forever ago over a decade <laughs> ago at this point or is it no 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 it's just out a decade yeah it? yeah so let's let's be real um tf2 is at a disadvantage because 
it was born in an era where this type of stuff didn't exist. I mean, hell, they came onto the scene when matchmaking, when the idea of, hey, let's just find people that like to play together and smush them into the same server. Automatic matchmaking was just getting started. No, that's where you're wrong. On PC games. Yes, but you have to remember, this wasn't just a PC launch. TF2 was also a console launch. Nobody played it on console. That's Nobody not does. true. And, and, and it never got maybe. updates. Yeah, so so Valve made it. Uh, Sony never wanted to do the updates, but the fact and it remains, majorly lagged. Matchmaking had been a thing at that point for probably a good solid eight years. Good matchmaking. Halo 2 had good online matchmaking. All right. Rainbow Six Three had good online matchmaking. I will I will give you that. But the, the fact remains that uh, Overwatch was born as a modern game and what we expect from modern games, and TF2 wasn't. Now, that said, we can still blame Valve because... TF2 hasn't seen a whole lot of love, right? It's basically been stagnant. There've been some good, like, giant chunk updates that, hey, we're doing this thing, and we're doing a competitive mode, and we're doing man versus machine, like these big mm. updates, but TF2 is the redheaded stepchild of the Valve family. MVM, I think, did I, the most. I mean, cool. how long has the game been out now? A decade. I mean, at some point. Yeah, 10 to, years. And yeah. when people are moving on to other games, you know, they need to it. retire it and either make a new one or put all their horses into the fucking Dota bandwagon like yeah, they are. They did. Yeah. That's so fair. yeah. I I bought this. I really like it. Even stupid stuff like the play of the game. That That's really good. That, that was cool. Sells I like the that. whole experience for me. And not only that, like if you aren't good enough, like me, to get play of the game, right? Because I've gotten it twice. Um, <clears throat> Humble break. It, right. Um, <laughs> it, it still um, has got these private replays. So it remembers the last, you know, day of what you've done in Overwatch. And you get your own personal highlight reel that you can then export to video. So if you want to export like yeah. a 1080p clip so you can throw it on YouTube, you can do that. It's a couple button clicks away. It's really, really polished. So here's what they do and why people love it so much. Because you can be terrible at it and still enjoy it. Because they yeah. don't give you a scoreboard. They don't show you KDA. What they show you yeah. is positive attributes that everyone's doing. They don't give you the negative. They don't let you single out someone who's doing bad. They don't let you trash talk someone unless you've been watching them and know they've been doing bad. You won't know it. You'll yeah. know your team's sucking because you're losing, but you can't single someone out. Right. Like, you can get the same score, and you'll probably get a better score, as a healer, um, as you would playing a tank character. Uh, and the way mm -hmm. they lay the heroes out is so much better. I really wish Dota would yeah. copy this, but I know Dota heroes are pretty nebulous. I, Overwatch has got your offense, your defense, your tanks, and your healers. And they're all in these little brackets. They're in their own little sections. It's great. You're like, oh, we need a healer. And when you're getting ready to go into a match, it says, hey you guys don't have any defense characters. You might want to fix that. And you're like, oh, fuck. Okay, defense. It's yeah. wonderful. It makes the game so much better to play. Uh, just, like, stupid little shit. And Blizzard is the only company to get this kind of thing right. It, they got it. It's Blizzard, though. Blizzard, like you said, they have a polish that's... It's, it's just Blizzard. Ever since WoW, they have learned how to turn on the polish. Well, yeah. World, Warcraft 3, I think, is really when they started to polish it really well. Um, yes and no. There were there were some rough spots in Warcraft 3's um, online systems in particular. But those are the online systems that made the rest of the online systems. Yes, yes, they are. I think it started with StarCraft, and then Warcraft 3 is when they realized, oh, fuck, we're on to, we got this. Yeah, I... Yeah. I really wish other game companies could give as much of a fuck as Blizzard does. And I realize the, the reason they can is because it's Blizzard and they have unlimited money. No, no, no. But the reason they have unlimited money is because they did. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they <laughs> I mean, let's money. not reverse roles. They're not good because they have money. They have money because yeah. they're, good. They're, they're good. But it's yeah. a feedback loop, right? They can say, hey, yeah. we're oh, going to yeah. delay Overwatch for the next 27 years because it's just not good enough. And then when it is, they will release this amazing polished game that they still update. Um, I'm never going to get into the competitive season for Overwatch, but I can spend 15 minutes per match, have a whole like horrible shit match, but it's not Dota. I didn't feel like I wasted an hour of my life. I only wasted mm -hmm. a quarter of an hour, which is fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like it. So, I, Adam, I will, I will let you continue your week of gaming since I have monopolized oh, the time. No, um, that's good. If we play the same games, that only makes sense to discuss it. 
Yeah, and we're going to hijack one more of your games. So enjoy your yeah. loan time, and then we're going to be back. <laughs> okay. I've only got two more games. This should be pretty quick. Binding of Isaac. I think I streamed like one or two runs of that the other night. Uh, that's all I played of it. Um, Such a good game. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. It's a game I always come back to. Uh, it's a game I've had a lot of time in. Um, I always come back to it, and I'm always rusty, and then I get frustrated. But overall, it's it's always fun. It's a good game. And then the last one, this is a big one because this game is getting a lot of hype and i could see why because it is fantastic cuphead fresh off the press oh shit fresh off the press. holy crap this game is good i love it um it's just so well made it just drenches with style okay so give us your 60 second two minute right. review and then we're gonna start bombarding you okay uh cuphead is a um, old school style platformer. It is very difficult. You are going to die a lot. When you die, it says you died on the screen, which is going to parallel to a game I'm not going to mention because we talk about it too much. But it's one of those Frank. games you die, you die a lot, and okay, you time learn out. from your mistakes, and then are, you learn the patterns. Are we really getting to the no, point where if a game nope, tells nope, you you nope, die nope. on the screen, <laughs> no. that we're going to no, say not, it comes yes. from that? That's not yes. the point. That's not that the invented point. dying. That series invented dying in no. the universe. Not even Mario Brothers had dying before then. I'm going to have to remove yeah, myself from this goddamn podcast. <laughs> Fuck that's you. <laughs> no, that's not, that's not the point. The point is it's one of those games where you it's die, you learn what your mistakes are, and then you don't do that again. Um, a lot of or the you, game or is... Or you do, and you lose. Yeah, a lot of the game is boss fights, so and you have to learn the patterns of those boss fights. And then you learn the pattern of the first phase of the boss, and then you hurt them enough to get to the second phase of the boss. It's very, very old school. It's kind of, it parallels a little bit with like the old Mega Man games, the Contra games. Uh, it's a little faster than Mega Man is pace wise, but um, it's got good variety. You've got levels that are just boss fights. Um, you've got this over. Um, you know, in between levels, you've got this world, kind of like the Super Mario world was, you know, the little hub points or whatever you go to, and then each one is a different thing. You know, one of them might be a boss fight. One of them might be a, what they call run and gun, which is just like a side-scrolling platformer with shooting. Um, some of, There was like a plane level I played where you're flying in a plane. It was like, really reminded me of Tailspin. Tailspin? Really? Yeah. Huh. That, that flying a plane to the side yeah it reminded me a lot of that um but the biggest thing that the, the coolest part about this game is not just how good the gameplay is but oh my god the style it's so well done and you know me i'm a sucker for games with a cool style or aesthetic or atmosphere whatever you want to call it um this game looks exactly like a 1930s cartoon the the question I've got for you is: Does <laughs> yeah. it control and does it play as good as it looks? Yes, it controls very well. It controls very well. Are they um, justified with taking as long as they did to release this? No, See, don't, I don't even ask I that don't, question. That is a shit no. question. That is not a shit. It question. is absolutely a shit question because if the greatest Honestly, game of all time takes twenty five years to make, but it's still the greatest game of all time, if they released mm -hmm. it in ten years, it would be much less of a game. It would be absolute shit. Breath of the so Wild that, was they're, delayed. They're, that means that the justified to go twenty five. The answer is yes. So it's not a shit yeah. question. You just gave an example that backs up my question. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. I, I think ragging on a game for taking so long to come out is a shit way to do game development. No, the, the question the, the make only, it good, the then can, release it. The only way you can really get onto somebody about that is if they're releasing a bunch of hype trailers too early and then you're waiting forever for it to actually release. Like Duke this Nukem. is a game that this no, I, is a game that I saw, I don't know. A couple of years ago or something i saw a little bit about it i was like oh that looks really cool i can't wait till that comes out completely forgot about it haven't heard anything about it since and then all of a sudden i hear this game called cuphead's released and it's getting a lot of good reviews i'm like cuphead what the hell is cuphead that sounds weird and then i saw it and i was like oh it's that game i remembered that and i was so excited because of how cool it looked so i bought it and i'm playing it and it's great <laughs> Uh, i don't see any problem with how long that took to develop i mean if it's a good game it's a good game Yes, and it, I'm not asking the question in terms of being a good game. As uh, Dobby pointed out, and I had another example, Duke Nukem Forever took for fucking ever 
was it should mm-hmm. not have taken forever. The Last Guardian it got, that, took forever. It should not have said, taken as long they, as it did. They did not push Duke Nukem forever back because they said, "Oh, we want to make it better." They pushed it back because that company and that IP was bought and sold twenty seven times. Okay, then the Last Guardian. Yeah. The Last yeah, Guardian it, it, took it, way too long for his, what that game was. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think so the end question, I agree with AOL Instant Messenger in chat room. The, it's an irrelevant question. The only question you should ask is, is this good? Yes or no? No, I can ask. Breath of the Wild was delayed for like two years. And it was worth it. it, it yes, was it, it's worth- great. It's great. Yeah. And I'm, I am totally okay, even if the game ends up being bad, for a game developer to say, hey, we're delaying because we're going to try to make this good. Even if it ends up being shit, right? They fucking tried to make it good. They didn't say, eh, I guess it's all right, and fucking Ubisoft all over the place. Yeah. By the way, that's a verb <laughs> now. For the record, my question <laughs> was, it took longer to make. Did it make taking it longer to make show in the game? That's what the question is. Oh, yeah. Okay. Was so it worth the question, the, Was it worth it? Question, was the delay worth it? Um, well, yes. You can't answer that now because uh, you yeah, don't know how the game know played. The game was in. Yeah. yeah. So you can't go back so, a year and, and say, oh, wow, this is plays just as good as this thing because you don't have yeah. this thing. If you had a beta build of Cuphead, yeah. you could answer you that question, you can answer but that you don't. Yes, <laughs> if there were still shortcomings in the game. The game's a good game, but this okay. is a little rough. This is a little rough. Then the way it wasn't worth it because it was still rough. So here's the thing. I don't know when they started development. I don't know how many times it got delayed. Um, I don't know how much time they spent on it. But what I do know is it just came out. I just found out about it. I bought it. I have had zero problems. It is an incredibly good, polished game. No bugs, nothing weird. It plays great. I haven't ran into any anything weird. I mean, it is, it is a complete package, and it has done well. Does it have microtransactions? Does that... No. Oh, I'm not buying it. I can't play a game without <laughs> microtransactions. No, you after can't pay to win of, this game. After World, of Tank, after World of Tanks Blitz, if I can't pay to you, defeat my opponents, I don't want to play it. Or you see, there's an easy good. mode. If you die 10 times, you can just advance. No, no, I, I want to pay $5. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, then here, give me $5. <laughs> die okay. 10 times. Give me five more bucks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll do that. <laughs> But no, it's 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 really good. I've only played probably an hour at this point. I'm not very far into it. But even within that hour, the gameplay has been very varied um, and good, solid, very difficult. I absolutely recommend it. So I've been tracking this game for a while. Like I've, all the different shit I listened to for the last two years, it's been probably once a month someone references a goddamn game. Mm-hmm. Um. Somehow, I did not know it had an overworld. I don't know if they ever released that kind of information to the point where whenever I was watching you play and I saw that, I wasn't quite sure what you were playing outside of the aesthetic. The aesthetic is the only reason I was able to guess what that was. Yeah, and God, they did so good with that aesthetic. Everything down to like the... It's all like hand-drawn, all the way down to the animations. The character design is fantastic. It looks exactly like a 1930s cartoon. The music is incredible. It's this jazz music. It's, it's everything sounds like it's running through a record player. You get the visual artifacts and the scratches and the, you know, color, uh, color bleeding and stuff. It's just, it's so good. (laughs) Um, There is a good question in chat for you that I think I'd like you to answer verbally. How are you playing this game? I'm playing this with a controller. I haven't tried with the keyboard. I don't know what people generally prefer, but I've just been playing it with a controller. Because I noticed that there was some shooting involved. Yeah. Yeah, there's shooting. Um, You can tap to shoot or just hold down the button for rapid fire. And it's tied to the direction of your left analog stick. So, you know, if you're running right, you're shooting right. If you need to shoot left, you run left. But if you hold R1, your character doesn't move. He'll lock in place, and then you can use the left stick to shoot in whatever direction you want. And it's locked to eight directions. Hmm. So, so even if you're not playing with a controller, you don't have that, like, you know, disparity of the keyboard can only have so many angles to fire with. That's nice. But yeah, I, I was watching it. It looks so, so fucking good. I mean, that aesthetic, I'm normally not a um, big guy for artsy stuff, but that just looks so fucking, so beautiful. They've done a great job capturing the whole thing. 
Um, I'm going to definitely stream this at some point too. So if you're curious about it, you know, I'll be playing it on stream. Yes, you you should uh, totally be streaming this shit because that is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So there's... other than Cuphead, if there's not anything else you guys wanted to talk about it. No, oh. I'm, I'm going to play it. Okay. Actually, based on your recommendation before the podcast, <laughs> I, I went ahead and I bought it. I didn't read any reviews. I nice. didn't look at anything. I just oh, bought God. it. Okay. I, no pressure there. Yeah, if you hate a, it, it's not my fault. <laughs> that's a game I'll pick up on a Steam sale. Uh, we've got another question in that's chat. Fair. Is there online yeah. co-op? No, I don't think so. I think it's only local. Yeah, okay. that's what I that's, saw. Local but that's only. that's a hundred percent. I think I just read a review that said that. I don't have any personal experience with the co-op. The uh, Steam uh, overview tends to agree with that. Okay. Is so, yeah. did not call out multiplayer online. Okay. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> which um, i'm yeah, all for that's what I'm... couch co-op baby love it yeah so that's all i've been playing this week um i'm sure next week there will be a lot of cuphead to talk about more um yeah but what have you guys been playing this week tom you have uh some interesting stuff how I... about you uh, attack this one first yeah i actually i played a shit ton of games for for how busy work has kept me i actually got a whole lot of gaming in uh first thing to mention and it's a really short one um town of salem actually uh was at a land party on friday and i played this it's kind of if you've played like werewolf or mafia or something like that like okay. you've got the investigator and the killer um this was like 250 on humble bundle or something like that so we got it we played it good time with everyone in a room online i think it would get a bit boring um but it was it was fun. Uh, I named because your username is totally separate from your character name. So going into a game, you pick your name and then it rolls some dice and gives you your role. So I named my guy Serial Killer and I got the role Serial Killer, which was great because I lasted half of the round without anyone suspecting that Serial Killer was the Serial Killer. Hey, whoa. <laughs> it was amazing. It blew everyone's minds. Um <laughs> But yeah, that was that was kind of fun. Um, I don't recommend you buy it. It it was it was okay. It was all right. There's a web version. Fair enough. Um, I tried out Diablo three, the free version uh, on the Blizzard launcher. It's. I didn't realize there was a free version. Yeah, you can play like oh. up to a certain point. So yeah, pull it. It's it's oh. free. You're not. You've got nothing except hard drive space and time to lose. Um, right. It's it's not bad. Um, I think it's well produced, but I actually had less fun with it than I did with the Torchlight series. Okay, really? Did yeah, you play? Believe did it you or not, old, hmm? did you get into the old Diablo games? Uh, I played a, a decent amount of D two. Nothing. I mean, like when people say, "Oh my god, I was a huge Diablo fan," and they've got twenty thousand yeah. hours. No, I probably put about right. forty hours in. So nowhere okay. near anyone else. Um, but I I played probably a couple hundred hours of Torchlight. Uh, I love Torchlight. So, I like those type of games. I've just always been more of the turn-based guy than the real time uh, when it comes to those. Yeah, I don't know that I've played a game like Diablo. I haven't played Torchlight. I haven't played Diablo. Well, what about something like Boulder's Gate Dark Alliance or Champs of Norath? Oh, yeah, I played a lot of Champions of Norath. I yeah, that, that I mean, that's in the same vein where it's loot-based, okay, okay. hack and slash. Um, See, I like that a lot more than turn-based. I hate turn-based but I'm weird. I like those don't get me wrong it's just like the original Boulder's Gate um uh damn it the new one that just came out that got a 10 out of 10 um a, rich, a sin god damn it Souls is playing See, I was watching them last night either way those type of games those are really good okay you got me one original to play champions of hmm. now um so yeah I did some Diablo 3. Uh, Adam, if you want to give one of those games a try, uh, Torchlight 2 is going to be stupid cheap no matter where you buy it. I highly mm -hmm. recommend it. The only knock I've got against it is their online system is broken and it may or may not require a full restart of your computer to uh. get it working <laughs> again. It, well, it locks a port and then tries to use that port for everything and you've got to make sure both ends match because it'll auto-increment but it's still holding the old ones, so it'll bump over, and you're still on the original, so your buddy won't ever see you. It's kind of fucked well, up. The one thing I'll say about Diablo is the end game. You have dungeons that are, um, oh my god, I can't think of the word, randomized, um, procedurally generated. Yeah. So you get fresh content mm. a lot. Well, that's, that's, that's cool. the whole game, right? That's basically everything outside of your staple towns is randomly generated. At least that's the way it was in D2. 
I didn't think it was in this. There's just certain things you go into that are procedurally generated. I can't remember what they're called, but um, damn it, uh, rifts. I'm pretty sure the vast majority of Diablo, because Torchlight works this way. Torchlight, if you start a new game with a new character, everything is different. Like you've got your your hub worlds and your things that will always be there, like your dungeons. But the the placement in the actual maps themselves are completely randomized. Oh, or mostly randomized. But I the, say. but the maps themselves. Yeah. The maps themselves are randomized yeah. and procedurally generated? Yeah, so like oh. the overworld and shit. Like, at least in, in uh, Torchlight, yeah, everything was totally random. Hmm. I yeah, mean, there's nice. there's always things like, hey, there will be a town called this with this people in it, and it will be somewhere here, but you don't know where because it's a new game. So how do they do the quests where find this item? Uh, that item will be somewhere. Oh, okay. <sighs> yeah. Okay, somewhere. Because I, I yeah. played it a little, I played probably about 20 hours, but it's one of those things where I didn't play it again or anything like that to notice that stuff yeah uh i've gone through a couple times um i did play now we're we're gonna have to throw a disclaimer and it's the first big disclaimer we've had in a podcast irk this company pays our bills they pay us a salary right we work for amazon uh amazon now has a game studio that's not a secret it's not insider knowledge you just google amazon game studio and there they are uh, they are working on a game called Breakaway. Now, for like four days, this is like halfway through, uh, you can play the alpha of this game. And I want to stress alpha. <laughs> um, you didn't get a chance to play this, did you? No. Um, what you said about it, I felt when I looked, was a slightly different, but... Hmm. Because, go ahead with yours. Yeah. So... I like I really wanted to give this disclaimer uh, because I wanted to love this game, but I don't. <laughs> I actually dislike this game uh, in a big way. It's, okay. It was really disappointing. So Breakaway is, of course, because everyone in the mother has to do a MOBA now, is a MOBA style um, basketball game almost. Take your dudes and they've got powers and you grab a ball and you try to dunk it and, or shoot it into the enemy goal. Yeah. So is MOBA getting yeah. to the point to where that acronym actually now just means you're a hero with abilities? Yeah. Yeah. And basically. not actually what the acronym stands uh, for. I am, I am waiting for the Rocket oh, League yeah. heroes. Like you've got a driver no. and your driver has got certain nope. abilities. Yep. No. <laughs> and then the toxic community from Dota invades Rocket League. But yeah, okay, no, so back to Breakaway. Can you actually like throw the ball into the goal and stuff? Yes. Or do you have to run it? Well, it's yes and no. So you throw it, but it's just like pissy little lob it's not it's not a shoot it's not anything it's just a eh. it's like me playing basketball so for me when i looked (laughs) at it and for that reason what i thought it was griff ball yeah it's not griff ball it is not at all um Mm -hmm. so every little bit of damage because there is combat uh it's it feels very light it feels like it's uh, the way I described it in the feedback, because I did leave feedback on this game, um, it feels like flies attacking a bear. You will you will slap the same guy or, or swing your sword this, at the same guy like a hundred times, and you'll take down maybe a fourth of his health bar. Um, it's it wants to be fast, but the gameplay is really slow, and your walking speed is almost as fast as uh, like trying to drip honey out of a really cold jar. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think the base is there to where if they were to adjust the numbers, like if you only hit a guy twice and he died and your movement speed was up? Yes and no. Uh, none of the characters seem particularly interesting to me. But that said, uh, you know, I've I've gone through um, you know, Overwatch, which has got some of the best design characters I've ever seen in any game ever. And Dota, where there's so many characters, even the boring ones are next to some of the greatest heroes I've seen. Uh, this, I didn't give a shit about anyone. Uh, and I, I didn't care to, because the gameplay wasn't there enough to make me say, oh, I wonder what happens if I use this guy in this way. Um, it's not an awful game. It's just not good. I did not have fun with it. All right. And, and that said, you know, disclaimer, I probably don't need to give this, but, you know, Amazon, the parent company, totally pays my bills. So is that you saying that if it wasn't Amazon, you would say the game's fucking awful? <laughs> no, no, because it's bad. It's bad. It. I think maybe in six months they could turn this into something better. But right now, as it stands, it, it's just not any fun. That said, it's free. 
it's kind of a pain in the ass to get if you don't have the Twitch TV app installed because you have to pull the Twitch TV app and then, uh, you know, everyone watching and chatting has got a Twitch account. So log into that and then go to the breakaway site and then get the beta and the, or the alpha client and then download it. And it takes a little bit to appear and then you have to install it. And so it, let's um, elaborate real quick. When you say beta app, or the app, do you mean the Twitch app on the phone or the Twitch app on your PC? Is on the PC. The actual application. They are trying to make the Twitch TV app a launcher in the vein of Battle.net or Steam. So, hey, look, guys, another fucking launcher. <laughs> you yourself <laughs> just said competition's good. It yeah, is. Bitch about is. other launchers that aren't Steam. It is. It is. Because if I don't want the GOG.com launcher, which, by the way, is great. If I don't want that, I don't have to install it. I can just, like, click the download thing, and it downloads an XE in my browser. And then I can add that as a button in Steam. Yeah, but that's not competition. GOG competes with Steam. Well, yeah, no, no, but I'm saying if you're saying, oh, I'm just going to oh, buy it here the, and then bring it back over to this other thing. That oh, I say, I'm, talking oh about, I'm talking about competition for. and storefront. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't care about the launcher so much. That said, fuck you play. La- launcher um, is... Uh, <laughs> I won't get there. I mean, that's a battle for another day. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't think it's good. Maybe in another six months it'll be better. It just did not feel good to play. And the, the abilities were okay. Um, the AI needs some work, but it's... That said... I want to preface all this with it's an alpha. Uh, it's a public alpha to yeah. gain uh, a whole lot of people, you know, playing this game and, and telling them about these issues. So it's good. It popped up a little survey window, and I totally, totally took that survey and told them this is not very fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we'll probably never talk about it again. Probably not, but we'll see. <laughs> And we're going to act like nothing is happening while Irk gets up and <laughs> and walks away. This totally isn't happening. Yes, Don't even look. Here. No. Yeah, it's like he's. It's just like normal. Yeah, totally so what normal. Else, what else have you? What it's, else? Have, <laughs> it's only been you and I on this podcast. Um, All right. What else have you played? Uh, I played a little I'm bit saying, of Guild Wars. It's, it's Guild Wars. No. Guild Wars Two, which is free now, right? Uh, yes, if you want the base game, you know, go grab it, make an account. It is free. Um, if you want to play the expansion content, you do have to buy the expansions, but that's it. There is a cash store. You don't have to use the cash store, but it's there. <coughs> um, other than that, there's actually a game. Adam, I think you would like this because okay. you like artsy fartsy pretentious games along with me. Oh, yeah. Sure. Um, do you remember hearing things about her story? It's no, that does that doesn't ring a bell. Okay. Um it's a game about a computer interface and you're just watching video clips. Like you will um you'll go to a shitty little interface, type in murder, and you will have like six clips to pick from, and you can click on them and watch them. Your objective is to solve this murder mystery six video clips at a time. And oh, you'll okay. watch this clip, she'll say, Oh, well, they they went to the rock last night and you're like oh the rock and i literally i had a notebook in my hand and a pen and i was like mm, the rock and i had it in brackets because that was my next search term she's like yeah he was there with bill bill and Joni. i was like oh shit bill and Joni," and i wrote those down and now uh-huh. i've got the rock and bill and Joni to search for to try to solve this murder mystery and it's, it's gonna get deeper and deeper and deeper i've only gotten uh i want to say an hour into it but it's really cool because it's a game where I am taking notes in a notebook to uh, to solve a murder mystery. It is actually a whole lot of fun. Cool. And it's it's not as easy as, you know, I search for the word killer or murder and I yeah. totally solved it in one <laughs> right. I I have a I don't know why, but I like it when games <clears throat> make you write stuff down. I don't know what it is about that, but it's just this I don't know. So like, like the that. witness. <laughs> exactly. That's that's what I was thinking of. I, yeah. I like games that kind of oh, I got to write this down and remember this later, or keep track of this. You know, I've got a notebook for that. I actually have a notebook sitting here, you know, for stuff, and that would be used for that for sure. It's always uh, Rocket League calculations. Yeah. yeah. He's doing, yeah, he's doing a lot graphs. Of, I've got a lot of formulas and trigonometry and stuff on here. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, 
I really like her story so far. Uh, it was on sale recently, nice. and that's when I picked it up. But it really makes you feel like a detective because you're you're listening to testimony and you're taking notes and you're linking clues together. And I've I've totally filled up a couple pages now of of weird shit from this game, and I I really am looking forward to where this ends up. Um, nice. That said. Uh, why it's so hard to make a game like this is it's all about the writing. If the writing fails, the whole thing falls apart. Um, yeah. Speaking of writing, The Witcher 3. I've put a couple hours into Ooh. it. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. You foregone finishing The Witcher to go straight to 3? <sighs> I did. I did. So I was talking to someone who's a huge Witcher fan, and I said, hey, mm-hmm. I, I've, I'm trying to get through The Witcher, and I just I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. It's just... I love the writing. I love the story. The gameplay has not aged well, though. It feels like playing. I don't even know. Like, I, I want to say Baldur's Gate, but even Baldur's Gate plays better than The Witcher today. Um, it's it's just hard to play. And he said, no, nah, you can skip that. You can even skip two because The Witcher three can be pretty self-contained. If you're a longtime fan, you're going to get more out of it. But you can go right to three. So I went right to three, and I didn't have the same problems that I did in two. Uh, the writing is really strong. I already told some guy to go fuck himself. I mind controlled a guy. I got a horse. I mean, you start with a horse, so that's cool. I picked some flowers. I killed a dog. Uh, killed a dog. It was it was attacking no. me. It was a wild dog. Now you sound like me yeah. in the division. Fair enough. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I shot every dog I saw. <laughs> um, but it's cool because the quest. It, they're not organic by any means, but they feel organic. Like there's mm-hmm. there's a griffin and now I'm going on a hunt. I'm going to hunt down a griffin and I'm going to make some potions and get some gear. And like I'm I'm prepping like monster hunter style to go up against this big ass thing and take it on. Um, I am I am really happy with it so far. Now, that said, I've only seen a very small part of the world, but this mm-hmm. is one of the open world games that <laughs> has been compared to Breath of the Wild by saying, hey, uh, open world games, you better step up your fucking game because The Witcher 3 and Breath of the Wild just changed everything. Nice. And this is where I know Tom doesn't venture much to console because he forgot another one that launched this year that was fucking epic. Horizon. But apparently, yes. apparently that's not the one being mentioned. By who? Yeah. You? <laughs> Everyone. What do you mean? Which means me. I was going to say, I'm like, a lot of people talk about Horizon. So, so you've <laughs> been playing some Horizon this week. That's a transition. What have you been doing? <laughs> um, have I been playing her? No, I'm joking. Yeah, um, continuing with that. Nothing new. Um, I'm trying to get a platinum in that tro- in that game. For those of you who aren't console people, Tom, um, that means uh, you accomplish Not a all peasant. the achievements. Not a peasant for um <laughs> a game. Yeah, not a peasant, Mister Fucking Switch. Get out of here. <laughs> um, so I've been playing a lot of that. It's same as same old it's fucking great um i did some rocket league new season as adam said uh call of duty as adam said uh last night i actually uh went to bed a little early so i grabbed the switch did some more mario kart trying to get gold on all the different cups that'll still take me forever but there is one game that i didn't talk about last week that played a little bit and i actually would like to talk about some because it is a really fun game ultimate chicken horse Oh, yeah. I saw that you were playing this. This yeah. is a but. competitive platformer. <clears throat> okay. And it is huh. awesome. So, you start. Point A is where you start. Point B mm-hmm. is where you have to go. And you're playing with three other people. Mm-hmm. And so, you each get a piece of some form of terrain. It could be a ramp. It can be a saw that kills you. It could be a bow that shoots arrows that kills you. And you all run to get to point B. If no one dies, which normally happens on the first run, the game says, too easy, no points rewarded. And then everyone picks Mm -hmm. up another piece. So you keep getting pieces and pieces and making this level harder with all these tricks and traps. And then what Uh happens is, as you finish, you get a point or a certain amount of points. If people die from your traps, you get a certain amount of points. So the goal is to make this level hard, but you want to make sure you're above everyone else, and then you make it impossible. (laughs) <laughs> and then there's like bombs and stuff that you can get for items to blow up things that are already there. So it's okay. a really fun competitive platformer where when you're playing with certain people, you can really, really, really be assholes 
<laughs> so we was in this which level. works really well with our group. Yes. Oh yes. <laughs> so we were in this level where uh, you start. Uh, there's this big plateau with a waterfall, and you start underneath it. So you have to get around this waterfall. So you have to place items to do it. The map naturally does not allow for it. So instantly, of course, someone blocks us off so we can't go anywhere but straight down and die. So we all die right away. And we're continuing to be dicks, letting us get further, but we have saws and stuff shooting to where no one can win. And all of a sudden, Huge Direction um, puts a portal underneath that none of us noticed. So we're all dying, 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 and then finally, like the fifth round, he drops straight down to his portal and scores. Only person to score, fucker ends up winning because the rest of us were just being assholes to each other. (laughs) <laughs> it's super fun because the ways you go about solving the level the first time work second time it might work all of a sudden third time someone put death all over that so you can't go that way so you have to platform a whole new way so the same mm-hmm. level is always played differently and it's just such a fun online game to play and Dobby's calling me a liar because I forgot the fact that he went through the portal too fuck off <laughs> I don't care not porting on the story but <laughs> It's just a really fun, fun, fun game. Um, it's on the, well, it was on the Humble Bundle when I picked it up. So if you get it for cheap, it's worth picking up, playing with some people. Four player max. Um, at first I thought, damn, that kind of sucks. After mm-hmm. playing that game more than that, would have got really chaotic. Yeah, because <laughs> some of those items are really crazy. It's but, a unique uh, concept for a game. It's cool. Yeah, it takes Mario Maker and then puts double middle fingers up to your best friends. Nice. It's kind of awesome. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I don't like you. Fuck you. Try to beat this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all I've played. Um, and I think that's pretty much it for what we've been playing. I think that, I think that covers it. Yeah, except for Josh. Josh, you got anything, Josh? Yeah. Josh? What do you what'd you play this week, Josh? What'd you play, Josh? Oh shit. Josh is dead. Josh? Oh, okay. No, Josh. Okay. Yep. Anyway, no. so we got a little they, bit of news. We'll do the rundown for y'all. Um, PUBG, uh, Blue Hole, has officially spun off a separate team to support public or PG. Is that or PUBG? Is that what's going on, Tom? Since yeah, I butchered the acronym. <laughs> so uh, Blue Hole said, oh, my God, these guys made so much money. I don't know if we can handle or hold all this money at one time. So we're going to make a sub company just to hold all these buckets of money. And so now, uh, now the people on PUBG are now part of a sub company under Blue Hole called PUBG Seoul as Seoul Korea. Yeah, okay. so that's yeah, yeah. haha business. They made a lot of money. They're yep. splitting off. Um, Valve, as we've talked about a little while ago, um, they relieved or they removed green light, so people can publish games for hundred bucks. And as we expected, they got flooded with fucking games. Yep. A lot of them exploiting trading cards for money. So um, Valve said, fuck you, and removed 200 games from Steam last month. Yep. In fact, it was one company altogether was completely removed from the marketplace, I believe. I don't have the name in front of me. But- uh, I do. Um Almost 200 games were uh, were developed by Silicon Echo Studios, also known as Fucking Asshole Studios. Um, Steam has uh, Steam users have criticized them for selling low quality shoveware titles. Basically, these guys were making a shit ton of really cheap, really easy to make games, uh, and selling them just to make trading cards appear with Steam, and then selling the trading cards to people. Yep. Yep, so Valve said, wow, fuck you, that's not the way you use this, and you know that, fucking banned. So, uh, Valve putting on the big boy pants, I like to see it, I like it. I think we were all a little concerned when the barrier to entry to get to Steam dropped to almost nothing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Because we feared this. It's already hard enough for a good game to surface, it gets even harder for a good game to surface amongst a muck of shit. So, it's good to see that you removed that. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, Fortnite devs say they have sold over a mi- or had over a million players playing the battle royale mode already. Wow! On launch day, I Insane. think making that free immediately was one of the better ideas they've had. Yes, yes, yes it was. However, because right now, right now the base game Fortnite, I believe, is how much is it now? There's uh, there's a base price for the game, but it, it's eventually it's still it was in 30. development. It's yeah, I thought something it was a like full that. price. 
Was it? But Ugh. but right right now it costs X amount of dollars and it's in early access right now. Once the game is done, it's going to be free to play. But they introduced this battle royale mode, which is very similar to Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. There's been some controversy, whatever. But um that that is free right now. Yeah. And to me, PUBG seems to be doing well. PUBG can't have any gripes on the fact that it's similar to them. But I we kind of alluded to it a little last time, but I do want to say they do have reason to gripe at the fact that Epic, the developer of said Battle Royale mod for Fortnite, also owns the Unreal Engine, which is the engine that Battlegrounds is worked on or is working on. Mm. So as Battlegrounds has issues and works with Epic to tell them, hey, here's what we're doing. Can you help us to get around this or that or this or that? They're working on them telling them how to use the engine to make their game better and then just turn around and fucking use it in their game now. As well as let's say Team A and Team B are both having issues. Team A needs to make a fix for both Team A and Team B. Are they going to do it for themselves to help themselves or do a different fix to help someone else? Hmm. I mean, I, I there's think... a lot of this poll. I know it's different teams, but when it all comes down to it, your competitor is now the person you're relying on. And yeah. that is a very uneasy space. It, it is. It is. But that said, let's let's act like we're unreal. Right. We, we sell an engine to people. We don't make money on our games. Right. Our games are there to purely to promote our engine. Um, our, our games. I mean, That's not true. Unreal Tournament 2004 was the last game, or I, I'm, I'm even going to give it to this. Unreal Tournament 3 was the last game to actually make them a lot of money. You sure about that? Pretty sure. Because I'm pretty sure they had oh, a... Oh, they make gears, don't they? There you yeah, go. Okay. okay so, there you go. <laughs> but that said, that said, I think their games really mostly exist to sell the engine. Because um, that's where they make the majority of the money, right? You can, you can grant me that. The majority, yes. Licensing. Yeah. So... If I'm unreal and I'm holding back shit or, or making changes to the engine to better me and me alone and my games alone, right? Isn't that biting the hand that feeds you? Won't other people look at this and go, holy shit, if we partner with Unreal, if we partner with Epic, they are totally going to fuck us over. You realize, a little, I mean, some of them, yes. I, and it wouldn't be such a big deal if we were talking 10, 15 years ago, right? But right now, they've got major competition, right? The CryEngine is pretty fucking good. Unity has eaten Unreal's lunch in the vast majority of cases because it's so easy to use. And their terms were way better than Unreal's. It's, there's actually competition in game engine spaces now. And let's be real, like uh, Rockstar's engine, people do license that. Well, Not very often, but it does happen. I think that's why this is even bigger, because maybe they're starting to say, you know what? Let's do more in games. Let's not just be a Microsoft shop. Because yeah. let's be real, since Unreal, that's what they've been, is a Microsoft shop. Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, I, I just, I don't see this turning into a big thing. Um, PUBG might cause a stink and might get pissed and i seriously doubt they'll go to another engine but they could right that's always a possibility but i don't really see this hurting uh epic in any major way oh it's not gonna hurt epic it's not gonna hurt epic at all yeah PUBG's gonna drop player base PUBG's gonna fear support PUBG's gonna lose support with the dev community i think uh i i doubt that i i really doubt that um I don't know. I, I think this is a whole lot of hot air. I, I don't think this is really going to be a, as big of a thing as they're trying to make it. I'm going to smile when I see their numbers next month <laughs> because I guarantee <laughs> you it's a drop. It's going to be a sizable drop. But it, because uh. let's put it this way. Let's say Adam doesn't own PUBG. He wants to play a battle royale. So he gets Fortnite. He wants to play with friends. We own PUBG, but he can't play it. So you know what we play? Fortnite. Yeah. Oh, All yeah, of a sudden, the, you know yeah, what I realize? I really like Fortnite. The being free thing will always, always yeah. trump the paid yeah. game, right? The thing so, is, they, they, the games feel so much different. They they're, do. They're, they're do. really, really different games. It's a completely different game with a battle royale mode. It's not, they're not even that comparable, I don't think. Yes, but I don't think so either. I mean, they're comparable to, they're still kind of shooter ish. They still do the same thing to a degree, but you want to play with your friend is the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. 
I will I play Rocket this, League or point, I will play another game just to play with someone. It doesn't have so to be So many similar. people, so many people already have Battlegrounds. So it's not often an issue, I don't think. You think it's reached a saturation point where it doesn't matter? It's, yeah. I mean, I do. Yeah, almost. I, I think no, they're they, going to feel it. They're beating out Dota, right? Which is, mm -hmm. they are currently the most played game on on PC gaming. We can, we can naturally assume that. No, you that. can't. Okay, Solitaire is number one. PUBG is probably number two. No, League of Legends is still <laughs> beating them. Are they? League of Legends beats Dota. League of Legends is huge, yeah. yeah all right. You have to remember, you're going off of Steam charts. Yeah, that's true. I am going off of Steam charts. Yeah. Um, but e even so, even so, top five, right? They, they still have made a metric fuck ton of money, and I know yeah. they want to make more money. I'm not saying they, they don't deserve more money because they made a thing people like. But mm -hmm. I, I don't think this will hurt them as badly as everyone's predicting. Yeah. I, well, no one's really predicting it's going to hurt them, except for they're crying because they fear it's going to hurt them. Yeah. And yeah. I think that they're right to do it. But um, there's also a little bit more news, uh, quick stuff. Red Dead Redemption 2 had a new trailer. Yep. Um, nice. Nothing big in it. Outside no gameplay. of it seems like you work for Dutch, potentially. Which, if you haven't played the first, I'm not going to say too much more than that. If you have... You know what it's getting at. It's, um, mm -hmm. Star Wars Battlefront 2 has a new trailer. It's actually one that's made me really consider buying this game. Lots really? of in-game play stuff. It looks really good. Uh, it, the whole trailer was basically an apology of, hey, we know we fucked you with the first game. Here's a whole lot of content with an apology note. And the apology yeah. note is from EA, so, I mean, it might be covered in poison or something. We don't know. <laughs> I, the, I'm not saying go out and pre-order this. I'm not saying go buy this when it comes out. But I will be looking at the reviews, and I could see myself owning this one day if EA totally doesn't shit down my throat. So the biggest issue <laughs> with the first game, the gunplay felt good. It felt limited in the fact that there wasn't a whole lot of maps. There wasn't a whole lot of items. The game felt as if there was supposed to be more to come that they, mm -hmm. and to be fair, they added a lot later, but in a yeah. game like this, you need to have it there to start. Mm -hmm. So they have these screens on the trailer showing, Oh, we had four maps on launch. We have 16 yeah, this time. A direct, com direct comparison between the first one and the second one. We're talking at least three times more every time. So yeah. they realize where they fucked up and they're trying to correct it. It's by dice. It's fucking going to be good. It's just, they're going to have content to start. Let's hope it stays fresh. Yeah. Because hopefully. the first one played well. So we'll see. The first, yeah, the first one had potential. A game like, bat, um, I almost said Battlegrounds, a game like Battlefront is, you know, there's some nostalgia for the old games, but there's, it's such a big, it feels like a big war. You know, those games are just, the scale of those games is huge. You know, you've got yes. the aerial battles, the ground battles. You can play as different people. It just, it feels epic. It feels, you know, Star Wars. And, you know, if the if the first one kind of seemed limited like that, that, I could definitely see people having a problem with that. So hopefully they've made up with it with this one. The yeah, trailer I mean, looks great. Even the first one, like there was um, some of the maps, like, okay, you got the walkers going while you're fighting mm -hmm. through the fucking trenches and you got different f things flying over fucking head, A-wings, all that fun shit. Mm -hmm. It felt good. But the problem yeah. is there was only two other maps or three other maps and then you're back to that one. And that's yeah. fine for an hour. <laughs> yeah. And maybe two. Once you get on hour three, day five, week six, man, it just gets dull. I don't care how <laughs> epic it feels. It gets dull. You, you can either yeah. make one perfect map like they did in Dota. Or you can make a lot of non-perfect maps like they do in every other game. Yeah. Al although I would agree that if Counter-Strike just had Dust 2, that would be okay. Dota's perfect map that they switch every major patch. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's it. That's it. Dust 2 hasn't changed. Except they yeah. changed it in CSGO, and I still know how I feel about that. Guys, uh, did I mention Battlefront 2 is really good looking? It looks I'm watching the, I'm watching oh the trailer. Oh my god, it's it looks, gorgeous. It looks, it looks, it looks, it looks and beautiful. Also, and Dice, Dice is known for having really good visuals. Yeah, they sound. are. Um, sound October especially. 27th, I'm going to say. Um, mm -hmm. Sometime in October, the dates, don't quote me, there's going to be an open beta. Oh, we are doing yes. this. We're yes, doing this yes, as a community yes. game. Oh yeah, it's happening. So... 
be ready. It's going to be awesome. Try it out. And then if you don't like it, you know what you're getting. Get the fuck out of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I played Call of Duty World War II for free. I played it for free last night and I'm never yes. going to buy it. They're not going to get a dime of my money. And that's OK. I like that. So games, while they've gotten rid of ba- demos, they've done a really good job at transitioning to the idea of an open beta. Uh, yeah. And it, it helps. Yeah. It, it really helps a developer because it allows them to get their scale right to figure out issues to test their game on a whole bunch of different hardware configurations in, in the case of PC gaming and on top of that it lets the consumers actually play the game or, or play you know a, a build of the game and decide whether or not they want to pl- uh, pay for it in the future and that mm-hmm. helps everyone now developers Thank are you, probably man. sad that I said I'm never going to buy Call of Duty World War 2 <laughs> but let's be real even if you didn't give me a demo even if you didn't give me an open beta I wasn't going to pay you anyway. Right. So the, yes. the Battlefront 2 open beta is October 6th through 9th. Oh, shit. Next that's week. real close. Okay. So next week, community game. Yes, potentially. Yeah. 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 Also, <laughs> that's a good thing to point out. So we have not said that this week. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, so good. my apology to people. Um, we are doing Rocket League as a community game postcast. Um, this yes. is not standard Rocket League. What we're going to do is we're going to have a private held mat or lobby we will have the username password available for everyone in discord as well as we'll have night bots spitting it out there so everyone can see it mm-hmm. um we are going to do one-on-one round robins uh, i'm gonna say this right now on cast so everyone understands how this works two people play as soon as the first person gets scored on they change team to go to spectate someone else takes their place this is not legitimate games all the way through you oh. rotate on goal scored okay Yes, I thought we were rotating. This, I, this is, I actually didn't know that. This, yeah, this is mostly, the other night, didn't you? This is we're gonna call this Adam Round Robin because we could imagine someone scoring on you. We couldn't imagine anyone actually beating you. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> this makes it a little more fun for the people with lesser skill like me. Like Tom. Who, we couldn't beat you one on one, but we might be able to uh, score on you. Maybe. Maybe let's let's be real. I'm never gonna win a round. Okay, but yeah, you might. Yeah. But anyway, that's yeah. our that, that's our postcast game this week. Yeah. Um, and there's one more. Wow. I, this is the last piece of news. I'm sorry. Second to last. We got a last minute story. Okay. Well, let's get last that one in minute. there. Cause I want to, I might spend some time on this one. Okay. So thanks to dark soul invader. He let us know that, uh, holy shit. The team behind injustice Two really put out a fucked up patch. Um, reportedly deleting player gear, uh, causes under investigation. So they installed a patch and, their gear, all their shit just went away. Um, so they, they released a patch which accidentally released a new character which wasn't ready yet. So they released a redacted patch and wiped shit from people's accounts. Even uh, this this post is saying uh, apparently legendary and paid content was also wiped in some cases. This is <laughs> fucked up. You ready for me to connect some dots for you? Yeah, let's do it. So, <clears throat> NetherRealm Studios, the developers of Injustice 2, is also the developers who split off when Midway went bankrupt to take over ownership of Mortal Kombat. MKX had a very pol- or a very bad launch on computer. But it eventually got there. However, they had a patch on M- MKX that completely wiped save data oh. all the way through. So this is not the first time that they have wiped shit off of people's game, games. So uh, they, they totally admitted, oh shit, this is a bad patch. And uh, a new patch will be available yesterday. Yeah, it looks like a patch was available yesterday. And okay. they say that they are addressing the missing content uh which apparently some people are reporting that yes your stuff will come back some people are saying if you go from 1.09 directly to 1.11 you'll be unaffected uh some people are saying no they're still missing things so this could be a really shitty thing for those people and if there's any faster way to make sure people never buy your products again it's you wipe their save data or shit yeah. they paid for now let's be uh. let's be fair they will make up for this yeah, I have no doubt. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Thanks for the it, money, though. <laughs> and this is not going to hurt their sales because these are this is the team right now that has set the bar to what fighting games need to be. They yeah. were number one in yep. sales, and then Tekken 7 was number one in sales. People I have mean, been playing the hell out of Injustice 2. The story mode. They have, <laughs> they have taught people how story modes are to be in 
uh, fighters. So Cool Bivens in chat says, hey, they could do better. The next patch will wipe your save data from other games. And I cannot <laughs> wait to see that happen. Oh, my God. I was just playing Injustice 2 on my PS4, and now my Stardew Valley save has gone on the Switch. What the fuck? <laughs> Nether Realms, you fucked me. That would be awesome. Uh, Holy Monument shit, they wiped player. my hard drive, and it wasn't even connected. I'm, I'm playing at a defies friend's house on his system. Walls of, defies all laws <laughs> of physics. Oh, my, my God. My, my social security number and credit cards. My bank account just got wiped out. <laughs> Nether realms, what have you done? How do I have 17 lines of credit out against me right now? Oh my god, you got patched. <laughs> Nether realm strikes again. You've got patched. Oh shit. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, Bivens. Excellent. We appreciate oh, that. That. that was good. Yeah. Um, and there's one more little piece of news. Uh, the voice actors. Um, you may not have noticed too much right now. Who knows if we'll ever notice. Uh, the voice mm -hmm. actors were on strike. It's been for 11 months. So voice actors typically will come in at the end of games to, I shouldn't say the end, but I mean relative to how long the games take towards mm -hmm. the end of the cycles to voice act. Well, they went mm -hmm. on strike. So for the last 11 months, no one from the union has been doing voice acting for games. So as of right now, I don't know what games have all been affected. And you know the know. okay. This is me, shitty. I'm sorry. Mass I'm effect? gonna be this guy. Is anyone ever really gonna notice? Because um, I got in a big debate with Dobby about this. Uh, I don't think voice acting matters. I mean, no, no, oh, I, I completely no, 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 no. Let, let, get, let me finish my statement. <laughs> All right, it doesn't good. matter to the point where in movies you go to a movie because it's Will Smith. You don't buy a game because this is a voice actor. You buy the game because it's of the series or it's this developer that or said, it's this type. That said, if the it, so the Witcher, the original release of the Witcher tip uh, in the the classic non enhanced edition had some of the worst voice acting people I've ever seen. Right? People remember games because of bad voice acting. Case in point, yeah. Resident Evil. Right? Silent some Hill. Of, Silent Hill. Some of the most classic, horrifying. Uh, voice acting of all time. If you are playing a game with any amount of, of the night, yes. If <laughs> no, I, I can't even remember what Dracula <laughs> said though. No, no. Here, here's the thing. Don't, what is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. Don't. That was probably better than Symphony of the Night, right there. Don't confuse yeah. voice acting for writing. No, I'm not. But yeah. But, like especially with a game like you take these big RPG epics, right? Like Mass Effect or like The Witcher, right? If the voice acting isn't on point, it will eject you from the experience. Not not like take you the, out of it. Like fucking pull the ripcord and blast mm -hmm. you out of the car, kind of if, eject you. Yes. If but, the if the Last of Us did not have really good voice acting and acting in general, um, I don't think that would have been good. And keep in mind, too, acting, I don't I don't know if this is is this only voice acting or does this also count for games where they use motion capture and actually act out scenes this is voice actors only yeah this is just okay. voice actors and so okay. voice acting is the line between your game being serious and campy yeah but here's my Absolutely. biggest thing they were wanting residual income off of game sales I, I don't see why that's a problem. Why don't developers get that? Why don't designers get that? I think everyone should get that. Everyone should get some small piece of their pie, right? The development studio should say, hey, thanks for coming on. Thanks for making Gears of War 3. You're going to get 1% or whatever. Right? You know what it's The studio is going to get 5% and we're going to chunk out this amongst our entire dev staff. It's your well above average salary is your compensation no, for making that that's game shitty right because skyrim has been sold uh, how many times right and the guys aren't seeing any more of that money what percentage of amazon income do you get uh, whatever the stock price is and no, that's, no, no, that's no 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 that's that is your salary we'll get uh, that offline um, that is not the same thing once you quit amazon you don't get more no once you I, quit I a studio that. you get residual income but from if that. i'm an actor in a movie right and that movie keeps selling if people keep watching seinfeld jerry seinfeld keeps getting checks you know why because jerry yeah. seinfeld put in more than 10 percent of the work done to do it i'm just saying a because bad program, voice acting can ruin a game yes but what i'm yeah. saying it is, won't ruin rocket league it will ruin mass effect do you know what ruins it even more bad coding bad design yeah. bad that being everything said else too. 
even if the voice actors union is on strike, that doesn't mean those are the only good voice actors out there. Yes, to do voice I will. I will agree. But that said, there's also this weird shit that happens in Hollywood and now apparently in game studios where if you are not part of the voice actors union, if you're not part of the actors guild and you do some voice acting or some acting, you are now blacklisted as soon as those guys go off strike. Right. Hopefully you made enough money on that one gig because you are never working in this town again. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, uh, I won't get into that. There, there's some major but issues there, and that's the shit that happens. My biggest mm-hmm. thing is they are wanting so much while they themselves contribute so little to the game. The amount of effort that they put into do, the do game. Do you know what residual income it, are, right? If, uh, did they say 35%, right? That's outlandish. Did they say two? That's still a little high. Did they voice, say one? I could swing one. One's even voice high act, because they're less than one percent of the effort put into the game. Ah, uh, not a voice same. acting. It, f- yeah, I mean, voice acting is not just something anybody can do. Too, these are people that have been training for years, and you have to also remember that a, a type of a type of work like that, they're not all going to be getting salaries. They're it's mostly probably contract work. It's yeah. a gig. It's, it's contract work. If you can get the gigs, then you get the money. And if you can't get the gigs and you can't get the money, I don't see why they I should think- be treated, you know, different than actors because actors will get residuals from a because movie. Actors, the amount of time they put into a movie is uh, substantially more than no, the amount no, of time I'm, I'm a voice saying, actor puts into a game. I'm not saying the exact amount, right? I'm not, I'm not comparing amounts or percentages here. I'm just saying like that. An actor will get some residuals. A voice actor should get some residuals. You know the, Developers should get some residuals. You know why? Scale it residuals down as far for as you everyone. Need to. Because it's very hard to make a movie without an actor, it's not hard to make a game without voice actors. That's why. You tell that to Rocket League. For a good game, it, it would be. No, it's depending not. Depending on the game. It depends imagine on the game. Imagine The Last of Us where you could only read the text. Yes, but imagine a movie without actors. It's different. I don't know. Wally was great. <laughs> yeah, there's some. It even had voice actors. <laughs> it did. It did. Just, and you know what? Those voice actors got fucking residuals. I'm just saying the fact Book is... dropped. It takes five to six years to make a really good game. It takes a voice actor three months. If that's a long voice acting gig. And yet they're the ones with the residual while the developers who are working six years get fired and lose their jobs once the studio goes out of business doesn't get residuals. So so Dr. Fuzzy Gloves brings up a good point in chat. He thinks this is a bad idea in the long run for almost everybody. Right now, the company that makes all the money from a game then turns around and puts that into expanding other games. If the game was to flop, nobody makes anything instead of just the company not making anything. And that's a good point, right? This means that if your game flops, you get less money. That said, I think if your pay were directly on the line, you might make a better game, hopefully, right? If if no, the big if no, the no, big no, producer no. if the big producer was gonna get less money for making a shit title than he would making, you know, a great title, then maybe they would delay the game. Here's the thing. Now some games break this, but by and large, people don't ship games thinking they're shit. They ship games not understanding what people want. I'll give you that. That's true. I mean, yes, there are some games that go out and just anything you're playing made, like, you know that's broke when you're shipping that. What the fuck are you thinking? Basically, anything made by Don't Bethesda um, and anything made by 989 Sports. Did you just call them 989? Uh, yeah. 989? The well, thank you. You said it right that time. <laughs> They, so they you, released you know, so many shit games on the PlayStation. <laughs> the only reason I know that company is because I knew never buy anything with this logo on it. Game day, baby. Game no, day. that was broken. <laughs> Fuck Matt. So, Game day's where it's at. <laughs> Either way, um, given this whole thing, we don't know exactly how much voice actors make. We don't know exactly the in and outs of that particular uh, job market, industry, whatever. Um, you know, if they... If if the money is so bad or the work is so, you know, varied or un, unreliable that they're willing to go on strike to make a point, I mean, unless we were to get down into all the details, exactly how, what's the state of the industry, how much are they making, how much time do they spend on it, you know, we can't really judge. I agree. I'm all for them making about. more. I'm not against them making more. Residuals are what I'm not for. Because to make residuals where there wasn't means that people who are not making residuals get less on their salary. And this is a totally different topic for a totally different podcast. But when you buy a game used, nobody gets any money except GameStop. Yes. Or whoever you're buying it from. (laughs) 
Yes. I mean, we, there's different ways to look at it. The, the music but, industry has a lot of rigid, residual in, income, and you know, I don't know that that works well for them. But you know, if everybody got a percentage, and those percentages correlated to the amount of effort or time spent into the game, maybe it would be a good. I don't know. If it I'm was not go an economist, <laughs> yeah. To me, it's something that needs to be. Everyone gets it that way, or no one gets it that way. It's fucked yeah. up to do it to yeah. a degree where these guys. I'd be, I'd be okay if everyone got it. That'd, yeah. that'd be good for me. And I'm okay at that level. It's just I. To me, it's the people who are putting in the least amount of hours to this particular game. Not saying they're craft. Don't get me wrong. So, so what? What I've actually heard um there there are i've listened to several interviews with voice actors for games and it's actually a really fucking terrible job you could be screaming at the top of your lungs for hours at a time every day to capture death sounds or you know okay now scream like you've been uh you know attacked by some fucking nerd who just bayoneted you in (laughs) in the chest and right and that's that's the sound i heard that that was some dude screaming in a booth for a couple hours to get just the perfect amount of grueling agony scream out of that Mm -hmm. death animation right that's not really good for your voice right they could really voice actors have actually injured themselves by by doing death sounds and screaming and shit and it's it's not not uh, an easy gig. Yeah, but neither is yeah, hammering a lot of five. Involved too. Neither is hammering five Red Bulls to be able to push code out at five a.m. <laughs> in the morning I'm because you're saying, behind yeah. the deadline. The game yeah. industry is like it, it's a fucking death. I don't know. I. I it's weird. Nothing the in the game sucks. industry. Yes, the job nothing, sucks. Nothing in the game industry is is nice, right? You couldn't pay me enough money to go into the games industry because it's. Yeah, it's a death march. It really is for everyone involved. And I think voice actors are part of that. And they've got the added issue of, you know, burning out their voice. And, oh, it looks like I can't work for two weeks because I literally mm-hmm. cannot speak. Yeah. <laughs> and with that. But, I, oh, sorry, Am you have one more thing with her in there? No, no, I was ending it as well. All right. Yeah, as you say, and with that, I think that's about uh, enough for us here. Is it? Yeah, yeah, is it really? Is. Tra- that trailed off a little bit. I demand residuals yeah, that, that, for this podcast. We, 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 we totally <laughs> went down a rabbit hole I there. want residuals for this show. So to bring it wow. back up to speed, <laughs> let's do the end, fellas. <laughs> Whoa, so, let's get to the end. For all of you out there, if you would like to watch <clears throat> any of our other new expanding content every fucking day, week, month, sometimes, but it's expanding at a rapid pace compared to normal, you can go over to our YouTube at 72 Pin Connector on YouTube. If you're over there watching this cast right now, you can always come catch us live Saturday night. Saturday, 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 Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern time on our Twitch at slash 72 pink and er, slash dot TV slash 72 pink connector. Holy shit. I yeah, that up. yeah. If you're tired of us droning on about certain shit, which we didn't say that name today. We didn't. Um, you can go to at 72 PC podcast and bitch at us. Tell us we suck. Tell us how great we're doing. Give us content you want. Tell us what postcast games you want. Whatever the fuck. Just tell us how your dog's doing for the day. <laughs> I demand to know how your dogs are doing. And also, yes. if you would, one of those archaic people who like to use RSS feeds, you can go over to our website at www.72pinconnector.com and get all the fucking RSS feeds you would like. But if you're a standard human who uses iPods, Google Boo. Play, Stitcher, or Boo. Pocket Cast, or any of those fabulous applications that are Ooh. fantastic you can find us on any of those at 72 pin connector and listen to all of our streams for free normally about in a week delay but for free <laughs> I'm, I'm booing our stream boo and with that, that fellas i think that's all we got for it this week yeah i think so hopefully i'll play more yeah, witcher that's about it Stick with yeah. us uh, for join us, uh, join us in yes. a few minutes. Adam will be popping up Rocket League and uh, jump in, do some round robins with us. Let's do it. So until next week, y'all, game on. Bye. Bye. See ya.